Deputy Catherine Connolly, you have five thank minutes. You. Thank you. Um, two and a half minutes. And I, I want to thank the ministers for their speeches <coughs> today and indeed for their work. And in my two and a half minutes, I want to just use it. And I don't know if you'll get back to answer me. I see Minister Butler there, day centres. You're, there's an announcement tomorrow. Respite has never resumed in Galway. And it's really painful to walk home at night time and watch people out of all ages enjoying themselves. Uh, no social distancing, but there's no respite centres opened in Galway. It's simply not acceptable. Yesterday, we, I talked on the draconian legislation that we're going to put through the doll once again, not evidence-based. And yet we're clapping ourselves on the back for the vaccination programme. And I paid tribute to the staff on the ground and the various venues. But we we need a full discussion here at some point as to what we're doing in relation to public health, vaccinations, what they're costing, the indemnity that we've given, the pre-purchase, what is it costing? There needs to be a full discussion on that. We've completely ignored intellectual property right. And as was said already by Deputy Gino Kenny, we're pushing ahead with making more billionaires on a trapped audience and giving them an indemnity and no parallel system for those who might suffer, and not a parallel system, a compensation. You forgot to turn on the time, so it's difficult to know just in relation to me. Yeah. Um, so th these are serious. And I, again, I've said this before. It's not the minister's fault that we're having a segmented discussion, but we do need an overall discussion in relation to what we're doing in public health. Vaccination is part of that, but only part of it. So we need a proper and full discussion on, on all aspects of it in relation to giving us confidence. In relation to the rollout, I would really ask you, Minister, to come back at some stage and clarify that those who, for various reasons, can't take AstraZeneca in the 60-69 are not punished. That message is going out repeatedly. I think you said it today, but maybe I'm wrong. No choice. Of course there has to be a choice. Of course there has to be a discussion between a doctor and a patient. You can't um, interfere with that. And so sending out a message that you go to the bottom of the list and wait there is not good. I'm in a little trouble here because I'm not sure what time I have. No more, Minister, but I... I It'd be I'd safe stick, enough I'd, to conclude at, uh, at I, I, Well, I'd stick with the five things that I was going to ask. The day centres have been asked in respite. In relation to Connemara, I reiterate what was said, and I won't repeat it, that arrangements should be made. They cannot possibly travel into town and across town. I'm not sure where pharmacists are at. And finally, in relation to the, I'm not sure why we made an agreement with pharmacists and not used them. It's, that's another reason that we have lack of trust. And then finally, in relation to Galway, I don't know if it's been brought to your attention, Minister, in relation to Galway, but I understand staff have been told to go home as a result of the cyber attack and no work. And uh, it's in the hands of the unions. And I'm not sure if that's been brought to your attention. I think it's patently, absolutely unbelievable that staff would be told to go home and take holidays in the middle of a crisis when they could be used to do so many jobs, including looking at the, including looking at the um, files that are in the basement and in private storage in terms of the attack and the, not being available. On the, I'm out of time, so I'll stop. I think... So we, we, we've...